Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Rackley, AKA LFG. Today we're gonna to be looking at a bait I think is essential for wintertime fishing that you can only get at shopcarls.com. Let's get out on the water and I'm gonna show you what you gotta have in your tackle box. There's just some baits that you have to have. There's certain categories, certain certain ones. Like you gotta have some spinner baits. You gotta have some crank baits. You gotta have chatter baits. Those essentials that are, are good hard baits that just catch fish. Everyone knows it. They catch they catch good ones. They're versatile. You can throw them in different situations. Something that is often overlooked are blade baits. A lot of people fish spoons in the winter time and, and maybe maybe you're not into spoon fishing at all and this could be a total replacement for fishing uh, spoons vertically and for me it's been an absolute hammer on all species I, I've caught uh, multiple species on this lure and it's something you have to have in your tackle box this is a blade bait this is the death stalker by 10,000 fish by the Ketchco company uh, only available at Carl's Bait and Tackle. So we're gonna go kind of take it through its paces today. But what it is, it's a half ounce chunk of metal. Uh, it's painted real pretty. It's got those pretty eyeballs on it and everything. But what I love about this Death Stalker is it also has a willow blade on the back on a swivel. And that right there allows you to fish it slow vertically and still have that, that flash of like a spoon, but also this keel on it, which is a, a little lead keel, allows you to rip the bait up sideways, almost like a lipless crankbait. It makes it a, an extremely versatile bait, really sharp treble hook on it, uh, and it's a perfect little shad size. There's really two ways I like to fish this bait as far as like shallow and deep and the first way it's almost like fishing a, a lipless crankbait uh, fishing around grassy type areas where the, the shad the bait fish are up and around that grass a lot of people throw swim baits or they throw those lipless crankbaits but essentially the death stalker is a lipless crankbait it's just metal it vibrates it doesn't have rattles but it's vibrating and it also has that willow blade which gives it like that small spinnerbait look so you can fish this around these grass lines. It's good to fish on, on the drops if you have grass walls, if you're fishing from the bank, where you can just reel it along the bank just like you would a regular crankbait. And it has a lot of flash, good in clear water conditions. You really need some stained, clear water conditions to fish that sort of technique. But it's a finesse approach to fishing like that loud, lipless crankbait that you typically see where people are just ripping it out and it's really loud and aggressive. I am going to make long casts along this patchy grass, this grass line, and I'm just going to pump the rod. Anytime I'm fishing a, a lipless bait, a, a crankbait that doesn't have a lip on it, I'm doing this action right here. And what that does is allows the bait to fall for just a second, and usually that pause, that that lets the fish know that that bait fish is injured, it's trying to get away, and almost 90% of the time, they hit it while uh, uh, make that little stop. So I always include that, that little pump action. It's easy to do, and if you're in grass, you really you want to like rip it out like this, and that can get a reaction too, just like your, your traditional lipless cranks. I got him, got him, fish, fish on him. Good one. Look at that. That's so cool. He hosed it. Absolutely hosed it. Ah! <laughs> That's what you want to see. Fatty fish right there. Absolutely downed it. That. That's when you know. That's when you know. They think it's natural. There's no questions, no swiping at it. They just 
gone. So you can definitely fish the death soccer in those shallow grassy areas. And even just reeling it in, in open water, if you've got fish around there in, in shallow, flat areas, it works good. It really imitates those shallow bait fish. But my favorite way, and I think the most effective way to fish this is in deep water situations. Now, not everybody's gonna go out there and fish these deep water situations, but for me, when I start really starting to uh, explore offshore in the early spring, looking for pre-spawn fish or summer when fish are moving offshore, even in the fall when they really gang up, and in winter where this bait really shines through, that's where I really love the Death Stalker. So I wanna show you the technique of how to fish it, and it's super easy. And all it takes is just, if you have a fish finder, if you can find some bait fish down there on the electronics, all you gotta do is drop it down and give it a dangle. Here's bait fish over here. Oh gosh, they're smacking it. They're smacking it, they're all over it. They're fighting over it. I got them that time. You can see how they just come up, they follow each other there. Nice, healthy. Engulfed, man, you would be good. You'd be good for the pan. So when fishing the Death Stalker offshore, my strategy changes a little bit on tackle. I am a big fan of spinning tackle when fishing vertically with spoons or blade baits like this because you're able to get the bait down super quick. If you're seeing fish on the electronics coming through, maybe a school of fish is especially effective in the fall. You can literally just open your bail, drop it down, and it goes down really quickly instead of taking a bait caster and kind of feeding the line a little bit. Uh, it's just a much more efficient way to control your depth. Also on my spinning setups, you can fish pure fluorocarbon. I do like to have a little braid on, on mine as well and use a fluorocarbon leader, about six to 10 foot, just depending you know, on the water clarity. That way I've got really good sensitivity too on the bait and I just like the, uh, the castability and everything of it. Less about the, the technicals of the gear, more so the action. Let's talk about that. So you can reel this bait like a lipless crankbait, and it's gonna vibrate through the water, and it's gonna have that, that little willow blade in the back that's flashing, kind of like a spinner bait, and that's really great, but that willow blade, when it's sitting still, because it's on a swivel, is also gonna turn and be a really effective cold water bait when you're just sitting still. So the action, a vertical jigging changes a little bit over the course of the year. So when you're fishing in the fall, for example, the water's in the, in the 70s, high 70s, low 70s, you can get really aggressive. That's when bass are really chasing Chad and going all over the place to really rip it up and down. Big strokes. But when you're fishing in the winter time, early spring, you wanna drop the bait straight down and just do small little pumps and then pauses in between. That's where a lot of people, they just, they just jig up and down and jig up and down trying to really aggressively get the fish to bite. And that is actually not the thing to do when you're in cold water. When you're talking about you know, low 40s to mid 50s, what I like to do is small little strokes of the rod, six inches to maybe a foot going up and down. And not real aggressive, not like popping it, just a, like a little lift. And then let it sit there for a few seconds. Almost all your bites are going to come when that bait is sitting still. And this is why I like the Death Stalker so much is because if, when it's sitting still, that little willow blade is back there turning. Just, just a small little bit of flash as opposed to other baits that when it's just sitting there, it just looks like a hunk of, of metal. It might have a little reflection, but it's not having that little quiver to it. So you have seen the Death Stalker. You can see, you've seen what it's about, what it's for, some different ways to fish it, 
You can fish it shallow, you can fish it out deep. Ultimate wintertime bait. Now, me and my boy John here, we're gonna have a little friendly competition and see if we can dangle up some white bass. Like I said earlier, one of my favorite lures ever for wintertime white bass fishing. And we are on a school right now. We can actually see John's bait down there. We're gonna see if we can bring him up from the depths. You ready, bud? I am very much ready. I see some fish down there and they look hungry. Let's see if the death stalker can put them in the coffin. Oh, hook now, sitting still. Sitting still with it. Well, I'll be darn tootin'. Crappie. That's a crappie. No way. Oh yeah. Should we do like oh a, yeah. Should we do like a point system? Dude. Like a crappie counts something different for like everything else. Oh, I, I think crappie should be the most because of the taste. Most? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So let's do let's do this. Okay. Now that we've established, there's not just white bass down here. I'm on too. Woo I'm also on. Dude, Keeping if we it get still. on a school of crappie. This does not feel like a white bass. This is a crappie. This is 100 percent a crappie. If we're on the crop, this yes. is crappie. <laughs> yes, dude. This is what's who awesome needs, about this lure. Who, who needs white bass? Anything. Yeah, who needs white bass when you can have white crappies? God hosed it too. Look oh my. That. Yeah, yours look, is look gone. At this double hosed. <laughs> so I think what we're gonna do is because this is a friendly challenge, we're gonna have a little bit of a point system, make things a little more interesting to spice it up. So a crappie counts as three points, a bass counts as two, and a white bass counts as one. So three points on each tie game. Awesome. <laughs> Go. Whoa, Buck. That is Are you not sure? a crappie. Maybe it's a mega crappie. It's a giant crappie. Maybe I'm just a wiener. Oh no, oh, it's a nice crappie. Oh, it's a nice. keeper. Nice. Tied game now? Tied. Six to six. Dude, he clapped it. Feels good. Please be a giant crappie. Oh, another oh, crappie. Another keeper That's crappie. That's another three-pointer. Oh, oh, I got it. No. Yes. No. Oh, he come off. He come off. Dang it. Dang it. The more crappier, the merrier. School fired. Current score right now is nine to three. I am nine to six. Oh, nine to six. That's don't, right. Don't bust me like Sorry, that. My bad. My bad. I need that big crappie. Tomorrow. Oh, I saw that. Doinked it, dude. You're <laughs> mega doinked. Doinked okay. it. Like put slack in my line. Twelve to six, baby. Gosh. I don't know if it's just John's ice fishing abilities because he's just really dialed into this style. Not a keeper. Or I've I've got like. 18 pound test on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really have 18 pound yeah. test on? <laughs> I've got like some, I've got like some frayed four pounds, so we're, we're good to go here. Uh, no. Yes. Shoot, dude. It's going on right now. You're crushing it. It's going on. I'm, one, I'm at one with my ice fishing skills at the moment. You are. Oh, oh that's oh, a nice I got, one. <laughs> I got bit. Dude, they're just not committing to this line size, I don't think. 15, 15. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this challenge. I was super worried going into this being that, uh, well, Rackley is a deep water master when it comes to the crappie and white bass, but right now I'm taking all that ice fishing knowledge and I'm bundling in on this Texas body of water. I'm honing in on my, my micro jigging skills. Let's keep it up. Okay, this is a major problem. John is dialed. Um, that is my rod, by the way. Um, <laughs> but as you guys know, uh, and I explained earlier, I like the spinning setup for vertical. There's just no better way. If you're trying to get the bait down there fast, you can react to the fish just more quickly. Uh, you can adapt a lot better with a spinning rod, plus the smaller line. If they're having a chance to just sit there and look at it for you know, minutes at a time, having a smaller diameter line helps the bait action, plus them not seeing it when it's sitting still. So I gotta go down to some smaller line. I'm fishing this on 18 pound test. This is the one I was using to actually like rip it around some grass, catch fish. Not the correct setup for this situation, especially after we already yanked a few, they might be getting a little pressured. So if I'm gonna catch up, I gotta downsize. Here's what a crappie looks like, but I know you've been doing a lot of rigging and uh, tips and tricks, but this is, a, this is what a, yeah, that's they also, a, this is a, they also smell pretty good too. Smell I just, just smelled them. That is just lemon that's his in thing, wound. smelling fish. Lemon in the wound? Did I just say that? Salt, in, Salt the in the I like wound. lemon though. Lemon in the wound makes a lot more sense, especially if we're gonna put, in, especially since I'm gonna be putting lemon on these guys after I bring them all home. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Crappy. That's 21 now. Hell yeah. Oh! There he goes. Come off. Oh! Jesus! <laughs> Shut your mouth. I just... Unbelievable. No way. Unbelievable. I just sent him your way. Unbelievable. Comes this off is psycho. I'm getting absolutely hammered. 
24 points right after he lost one too. Talk about some absolute salt and lemon in the wound. I have no doubt you can hook them, but you have a problem with the whole execution. Like, what happens when you hook them? You don't, you just don't want to reel them up, or how does that? Well, the problem is I've had a little bit. What was that? Continue. I'm listening. Yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for my time. I'm, I'm just waiting for my time. This John, is actually ridiculous. That's it. Here, um, will you take this off for me? I got it. There's I some mean, more fish. I would, but I'm about to catch one. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> I've never. Uh, by the way, you guys. Is I, there a barrel down there? I think like, I've. The? I think I've seriously caught like maybe two Texas crappie in my entire life. This has been the most action I've ever had in Texas when it comes to crappie before. So, I think uh, I'm just getting lucky to be honest. But it's nice to mix in a little talking. Yeah, you're gonna be on my speed dial for when I go crappie fishing. <laughs> from now on. And then you catch one. <laughs> Okay. This is so funny. Dude, are you catching the same fish every time? That's 30 for me. Yeah, I know. They all look about the same. I'm looking for... It'd be kind of nice if we could cross bass with like a mega today, but these guys are still a lot of fun. I mean, they hit it harder than anything you can even imagine of this uh, caliber, this little size. I believe the score is... Is it 30 to it 6? It doesn't even matter It doesn't. It doesn't There's even. no way I can catch up. <laughs> It would be different if like we were catching- Well, we did say if you catch a catfish today, that's that's the ultimate That's true. Bomb. Yeah. That's true. I might just keep mine closer to the bottom though. You might want to put some chicken liver on your yeah. dust stalker. <laughs> we have moved out to a, a deep water point. Where we were sitting, it was like everything was just roaming around. So we decided to move to more specific structure and we marked like six, we think, largemouth down there. There could be spotted bass. They're definitely bigger marks. So we're gonna sit right on top of them to see if we can dangle in front of their face. Oh, got him. No way. That was so quick. How's it feel? It doesn't feel like a bass though. Oh, no, it's digging. No, it's a bass. Could be a white. Oh yeah. Nice job. <laughs> hey, here they come. Oh, yeah, on the unit. Out. Look at that fat. <laughs> <laughs> Only worth one point, but it is so fat and it feels good. Oh, the white bass. They just jumped in my boat. Well, John, would you like a white bass or you want to just keep with the crappie? Let's keep the crappie. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say the same. There we go. Another species added to the list. Got him. These are toads. These are not little. John's hooked up. Hammered it. These guys are fun. It's just a testament that, it's honestly just a testament that these baits can catch literally anything. Wow, that is a pretty damn good white bass. <laughs> these are solid. That's dude. awesome. Just thumped it. Oh my goodness, thumped they are, it. So they are thick and hearty. Ladies and gentlemen, we have found the white bass. They seem to just come to this boat sometimes. Boom. Oh my goodness, dude. Boom. I just, I know what they want. You do, honestly. Just, oh, look at them all come up. Look at them oh, all yeah. come up. Oh, yeah. Look, look, look. That's so sick. <laughs> They're all coming up. Well, that is an absolute thrashing of fishes. I don't even know how many we caught. We were just bam, bam, doubling up, hooking them everywhere. I'm going to say we probably caught 60 or 70. <laughs> like, it was really ridiculous. Fortunately, I couldn't come back because John was just... Boom, boom, catching them at the same time. So, I lost the challenge. I don't even care. We caught so many fish, we could feed 100 people right now. It's just, it's just been amazing. If you don't go get one of these Death Stalkers, only available at Carl's, shopcarls.com, you are missing out. They pretty much catch every fish in the lake. If they're eating Little Shad, they're gonna eat that Death Stalker. Really one of the best winter time cold water, clear water baits, even stain water, I've ever seen. I need more after today. So, that is all we have for you today. Uh, thank you for being here, and I hope you learned something. Hope you learned to go get one of these death stalkers, put it in your arsenal, and get to twerking on them. We will see you right here on the next video. Later.